Community Unity Immunity Talks. My name's Lauren Brown. I'm one of your moderators. And a big thank you to our other moderator and tech support, Sandra Grassa, and Amy Ropp, our presenter today. So let's do a little housekeeping and tell you what's happening. First of all, Amy's going to be giving us a talk on gut health, autoimmunity, and fertility challenges. I want to let you guys know and remind you that we're constantly offering um, these free live webinars. And uh, basically, if you want to know what's happening, go to the healthyseminars.com website, click on resources. And if you scroll down, you'll come to our calendar of events here. And as you can see, today we have Amy discussing gut health, autoimmunity, and fertility challenges. We have another one this week because um, we're still running the Integrated Fertility Symposium 2021. It's still happening online. Um, access to that ends August 31st. And some of these pop-up lectures and sponsor lectures, we open up to everybody. So today we have um, our IFS group and just people that have an interest in the topic that are joining us today. Um, and you can see we got a few more happening in August. We're going to add some more, so check it out. And then September is going to get busy real soon. And if you scroll down, you want to know a little bit more. So here's Amy. She's going to talk about gut health, autoimmunity, and fertility challenges. Um, and uh, if you go below, you can see later this week, we have a talk on antioxidant supplementation and how it's improving IVF outcomes. Um, we talk on some of the botanicals, chaseberry, mac, maca, ashwagandha happening later, a PCOS talk. And uh, if you scroll down, I just want to let you know, because Amy's here and I know Mark's in the audience as well, we're going to talk a little bit at the end. But um, Amy and Mark Sklar are like brilliant practitioners and they also have an incredible online presence. And I've joined them for this Rise Transform Impact Mentorship. And um, we're going to be, um, I'm going to tell you how to get to it, but basically you can learn a little bit about what, what we're talking about. We're going to help our colleagues, that being you, how to take your business online to kind of create a hybrid. We're even going to add an extra tier to it where it's a fertility centric, but the online aspect is for any practitioner wanting to take their practice or hybrid online. There will be a fertility extra track if people are interested, if they want to do that. And if you want to know about it, you can click on that link at the bottom and it takes you to the page. You can sign up to find out about more information. Amy and Mark have agreed um, to do a lecture with me on hiring staff and associates. It seems to be the most common question we get. So we're going to put together, we actually have a lecture on this because it's going to be something we share in this group in this mentorship anyhow. But we're going to do a free live webinar on it. And then three of us will be on that panel for your Q&A. If you want to know about that and other free lectures that we're offering in the fall of 2021, please do sign up here on the mentorship page. And um, Amy's handouts are not there yet, but we're going to put Amy's handouts on this page. Um, so for a couple of days available to you. So you come here, you can download it. I just gave a talk for this organization. Um, so my handouts are there as well. So if you're interested, again, um, on the resource page, if you scroll down below, you can find stuff on the RTI page. And we'll talk a little bit about it at the end. And again, if you click here, it'll take you to the page where you can sign up. You can also download the handouts. Um, IFS people, I just want to remind you, so I'm going to click on the IFS 2021 here. If you're part of the IFS, registration is totally closed. Remember, access ends August 31st, 2021. So if you haven't watched your lectures, your talks, please do that now. And remember the sponsors, um, they all have discounts for you. So do check out all the individual sponsors. They all have coupons and savings for you um, that you can enjoy. Um, and that's also, by the way, where you can find more about Rise Transform Impact being one of the sponsors. So if you're part of the IFS, sign in and please work through your lectures and your talks. Um, let's click on this. Actually, I just want to highlight a few things about our speaker, Amy Ropp, and then we're going to get started. Um, so Amy has, um, she's a best-selling author, by the way. She's got two books that I'm aware of, and I think you may even have a third. I'm going to ask her to share about that. Um, more on a diet related one, but she has body belief. Yes, you can get pregnant and chill out and get healthy. Um, and um, she's in good company. You know, she's been um, featured in, on The View in Goop, Glamour, Shape, Allure and Red Book. Um, she's been received endorsements, uh, endorsements from people that a lot of us respect. Deepak Chopra, Christine Northrup, um, Arianna Huffington and um, Gabby Bernstein. And I've had the opportunity to get to know her personally, and it's great that she's going to share some information on gut health, autoimmunity, and fertility. 
I do want to remind you that this is for educational purposes only. This is not um, intended to be medical advice. Therefore, do not perceive this as medical advice. This is for continued education purposes only. If you have a health condition, please seek out a qualified health care provider. All right, Amy, let's get your canvas. She's even created a beautiful canvas uh, presentation. So bring up your presentation, reminding you guys in the live webinar that um, we're going to make those handouts available on the RTI page, which you can get to from the resource section to download. Also want to let you know that we'll put the recording into the community library um, so you can subscribe to the library if you want to watch this again at a later date. Um, so Amy, whenever you're ready, take it away, turn on your mic, I'll mute myself and we're ready to go. Okay, tell me what you see. Do you see just one screen that says gut health or do you see two screens? I see your slides below. Um, and um, I see your presenter that. window. Can you click the got it part? Do you see that on presenter window? Do I click what part on the presenter window? Do you, do you have a thing that says presenter winter window? Um, yeah. Click on that so it says you got it. I think you mean this, like that. Is that what you mean? I don't Sandra, I think that, Amy, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that what's happening is that you're sharing your screen rather than uh, sharing the just... canvas only. Just oh, try yeah. that and let's see if that's let's it. Do that. Try that. It sounds like that's I don't need issue. to see my presenter, so I wonder why I did that. Okay, let me just see. No? Ah, uh, there, there we go. go. Yeah. Yeah, that that's good? good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let me just move this bar out of the way. Cha cha cha. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, as promised, we are going to talk about gut health, autoimmunity, and fertility challenges. And um, I'm not sure. I don't think all of us on here are acupuncturists. I think there's some um, other practitioners, if I'm correct, right, Lauren? Um, but I you know, the subtitle treating the modern fertility patient with ancient wisdom. So I think that, uh, you know, as a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine, that is the lens at which I look through for many of my clients, but I also have um, a biology and a chemistry degree, and I have been studying functional medicine as well. And as Lauren mentioned, I've authored quite a few books. Um, I have another book that wasn't mentioned actually in that bio that has come out since we gave you that bio. Um, it's called The Egg Quality Diet. And it's very much based on what we're gonna talk about today and what I have seen clinically. Diet is one piece, of course, but um, what I have seen clinically work for these challenging fertility um, cases. And so let's let's get into it. Uh, cha, cha, cha. So the modern fertility patient can be quite complicated, but never forget to treat what you see. So I bring this up because, you know, I've been a clinician now for 17 years, um, studying Chinese medicine for 21. I've uh, been in private practice for a long time, and I also have a very busy, thriving coaching practice, which has been around, you know, many years before COVID hit that virtually I work with women all over the world. I now have several coaches that work under me who are all actually Chinese um, medicine practitioners. And I bring this up because I think it's obvious. We're stating the obvious. We all, we all know as we're trained to treat what you see, but I, I see what happens in the clinic and in these complicated cases when fertility clients come to us that um, it's easy to get caught up on the diagnosis. It's easy to get caught up on, oh, she has PCOS or, oh, she has Hashimoto's or, oh, um, you know, endometriosis or she's, you know, 44. And so, you know, she's, she's too old or, you know, that we get really caught up on the the presentation and the Western diagnoses that we actually forget to treat what we see. And earlier on in my clinical practice, um, you know, I had, I had taken actually, um, you know, different CEU webinars and, and all on fertility and, and how to treat fertility and was kind of following that typical method of, you know, um, what to do in the, you know, in the yin phase and what to do for chi and then yang and then the four cycles and the four different formulas and the, the common diagnoses for each uh, phase of the cycle. And but what I noticed in my clinical practice was the girls that I was just treating that were coming to me for, say, anxiety or depression or GI issues or 
uh, skin stuff that when I was working with them, you know, and, and things were resolving and I was using herbs and acupuncture and diet lifestyle, like I've always been, those are always been really important pillars to my practice. Those girls, when they wanted to get pregnant, they got pregnant right away. Things just worked out. When I had a fertility client and she came to me with like a diagnosis and she was working with a doctor and she was doing fertility treatments or she was actively trying, I was missing something. I kept kind of just focusing too much on putting them into these patterns that, you know, we were taught, if you will, from a TCM perspective of like, this is, you know, how you should treat in the follicular phase. And this is how you should treat in ovulation. And you know, it dawned on me one day that I was not, even though I thought maybe I was, I was not entirely treating what I see. And so it really reframed that, you know, and I say it constantly all the time, um, every chance I get, fertility is an extension of health. That's all it is. And when you're in optimal health, you know, and we know this from a TCM perspective, when chi and blood and essence are abundant, that's when we have enough to make a baby and to not forget that piece of the puzzle. And so I want to go in and start actually with a case because I think this is, um, you know, the best way to take it in, or at least this is how my brain works. Um, so we'll call her Allison. You can actually see, I do many cases like this on my website under uh, my stories of hope. Every month I highlight a different case from my clinic or a coaching practice um, of a woman that myself or my team have helped conceive. And so I actually did a live interview with this woman, um, but she's 41 when I first meet her, trying to conceive for four years. She's done two IUIs, six IVFs. She's had three miscarriages. One of those miscarriages was before she started doing fertility treatments. She got pregnant naturally, miscarried. And then two were, I think one was with an IVF and then one was um, a miscarriage with a, a genetically normal embryo, right? So. And then at this point, by the time she gets to me, she's got no normal embryos left. She also has Hashimoto's. Um, she's, she's pissed off. She's angry. She's, you know, she, she hates everything in life and, um, feels like her body has completely failed her. Uh, she came to me at the pushing of another friend of hers who, so at the time she's also working with a reproductive immunologist, as I mentioned down here, this autoimmune fertility specialist, because she's been diagnosed with endometriosis and Hashimoto's. And she's now had three losses, which without a live birth in between, which puts her into a recurrent pregnancy loss category. Um, and this autoimmune fertility specialist is the guy, you know, I work a lot with, with um, the brave Dr. Braverman group or Andrea Vidali in the New York city area. And so she was seeing him and her friend encouraged her to come to see me because her current, you know, and I, I'm not in any way, shape or form putting down previous acupuncturist that she's met with, but the current acupuncturist and herbalist. So I believe I was her fifth acupuncturist, keep in mind by the time she gets to me, um, you know, what they were doing wasn't working, right? So try something different. And her friend told her, you know, I do go really deep on the diet stuff. And, you know, I study with an herbal mentor. I've been studying with Sharon Weisenbaum for, um, I've done the program three times so far. So however many years that is. Um, and she was on a ton of supplements, like a ton, like probably 15, 17 supplements. She had done some diet shifts, uh, you know, like she played around with like lowering her gluten and lowering her dairy and, but no one really gave her a formula or a plan to follow. And like I said, she's worked with this autoimmune fertility specialist. She's had a laparoscopic surgery for the endometriosis. This is now probably two years prior to us working together. Um, her last transfer that she did miscarry this uh, genetically normal embryo, she was on a fertility cocktail for autoimmunity. So she was taking a blood thinner. She was taking steroids. I think she had done some intralipids. If you guys aren't familiar with all of this, it's a pretty standard autoimmune cocktail that they'll give women with a current pregnancy loss. There's an amazing book to read called Is My Body Baby or Is Your Body Baby Friendly by Dr. Alan Beers that I think is highly educational in this in this. Uh, field if you want to know more about this. But so um, so when I see this, I'm like, okay, so you've, you've miscarried a, a genetically normal. So two of her miscarriages were actually normals. We were able, we knew one was when we transferred it, another was tested. And so the chances of miscarrying a genetically normal embryo or baby are like less than 5%, you know, so you have to automatically think that there's something going on here with her immune system, right? Obviously she knows that she's already working with this autoimmune fertility doc, 
However, the autoimmune fertility protocol did not work, right? She still miscarried that child. So what else could possibly be going on? Um, her current diagnosis, as I said, endometriosis, she has Hashimoto's, advanced maternal age, right? She's 41 um, and poor quality eggs. So even though two of her miscarriages out of the three were actually genetically normal embryos, she's still being told it's your egg quality, which um, I just find really hard to believe. And the data doesn't support that whatsoever. So when I meet her, um, what I do with her is what we are all trained to do. I do a very thorough intake with this woman. Uh, the, in the following are these are current symptoms that she is experiencing on a regular basis that have not been resolved with previous treatment. So the nutritionist that she met with, the previous acupuncturist, the Chinese herbs, none of it is addressing what's going on here. So you guys can see the symptoms, bloating, constipation, the bouts of hives slash a red raised rash all over her body a few days a week. So she's getting this consistently. Um, to me raised a huge red flag. Okay, there's very obviously an immune system response going on. I asked when you took the steroids, did it get better? Oh, a little better, but not really. Once I was pregnant, I work, broke out in a worse hive rash situation. So right there, it tells you the body's having basically like an allergic reaction to pregnancy. And so I think from our perspective, we have to think of why. Why is the body this inhospitable to a pregnancy? What is it doing to reject? and why, and what can we do to repair this, this mechanism, right? Restore the right relationship as uh, Sharon would always say. Um, inability to lose weight, another one for me, that's a huge red flag, but that is a clear cut sign of inflammation. And I will mention the word inflammation a lot and I wanna just define it loosely because it's a very general term. Inflammation is actually a very healthy thing. It's a healthy response. We all need to have it. But when the system gets, if you will, I like to say the pipes get clogged, like the liver isn't detoxifying properly. From a TCM perspective, I think phlegm and toxins and blood stagnation accumulate and we just can't process good from bad, right? Like the whole transformation and transportation process, separating clear from turbid just goes to, goes to crap. And so um, you'll see this kind of like water retention weight. Uh, she was angry and depressed. She had every right to be. Um, painful joints, achy headaches, sinus congestion, vivid dreams, fatigue. And then also this, a regular period that was dark, cloudy, sludgy, purple, painful menstrual cramps that were better with heat. This did improve a bit with acupuncture, as did the constipation, as did the painful joints. Um, but it wouldn't stay long. So we know obviously chi stagnation is involved, blood stagnation is involved, the acupuncture is moving things along, but she wasn't getting you know, a lot of relief from the current treatment that she was undergoing. So this is what I did. Um, weekly acupuncture. So, and then we'll talk about this gut healing elimination diet, which is also in my book, the egg quality diet. Um, I took her off of basically all of her supplements because she's not absorbing her nutrition. I think that's very obvious. If her body's not losing weight, she's feeling fatigued. Um, her menstrual blood is is that dark and old looking you know to me it's like i i very clearly see that she is severely deficient and even though she's eating a fairly healthy diet she's not absorbing her nutrition so why waste our time and energy on herbs and on supplements until we can restore the right relationship with you know transformation and transportation function of the spleen um or you want to just call it improved gut health however you want to call it i think it's those are interchangeable, if you will. Um, castor oil packs to improve circulation and blood flow. I, I did put her on some Chinese herbs probably after I took her off the supplements and I, I really did like pretty a strong blood moving formula. Um, and I addressed, like I said, this is more for the TCM practitioners, you guys can read that. And then I also gave her tools for the anger trauma that she's experiencing. I told her to wait until she started, till she did it. Uh, we have to go and do another IVF. She will only do IVF. Her and her husband will only do IVF at this point. They're too traumatized by the process. I do think she could have gotten pregnant naturally. She only wanted to do IVF and test the embryos because everybody told her her egg quality was so bad, um, which I didn't agree with. But I do think it's really important also from an emotional perspective that we meet our patients where they're at. And I try not to be um, too authoritarian and more, you know, doing what feels good to them while, you know, moving the ball forward. 
So I got her to follow this plan for six months. I mean, it was not easy. It, it became easier when we, in the elimination diet, we cut out nightshade vegetables and her red high V rash went away for the first time in her life. And she started to lose weight. And that was it. She was convinced that um, I was onto something and, and I was too. And so she then is committed to the diet because she saw changes for the first time. She had never seen the changes before. I do think the herbs and really addressing the crappy blood, as um, Sharon would say, was was in instrumental as well as starting to heal the gut and really just removing everything. And then also all those supplements were just confusing the crap out of the body. So we, you know, we just kept her on the basic supplements. Um, she went for another IVF at the age of 42. She got three genetically normal embryos. So I think probably was 6% off her testing. And she now has two children from two successful transfers uh, a few years apart. And so basically we created those embryos. She then waited, we did transfer one healthy baby boy and then transfer two. Um, and she just gave birth recently at the age of 46 to her second one. So. I share this story because, um, and this, you know, I just think is important to point out. And again, it's not blaming blame. I trust that we're all exactly where we're supposed to be and everybody's on their path and we're all learning, but it's something to really take in that the previous practitioners and, and mind you, she'd been to several different, very, you know, established fertility acupuncture clinics. And they, um, from what I gathered, so again, I didn't see all the case notes. So but I did see herbal formulas that she was on previously. And I did see lifestyle and diet recommendations that were made to her. And they were all seemed very focused on her Jing and her essence, which I'm not saying is wrong, but I think we have to remember too, that, you know, until we improve the quality of the blood, I don't think anything else is really going to budge or shift. Um, and she did need to restore her Jing in her essence, if you will, or at least support that uh, kidney energy. But at the point where she came to see me, she wasn't even absorbing anything. So I had to first clear out the gunk, right? And then get her to absorb. And so, um, so just an interesting, I think, takeaway. Uh, so here's what we are taught. And we can read this anywhere. It's in my books. It's in everybody's books who've written about fertility challenges. This is what we're taught. These are the reasons for fertility challenges. The structural or anatomical blockages, which are typically due to endometriosis or fibroids or cysts or dermoid cysts, what have you. PCOS, endometriosis, miscarriage. There's three different acronyms for the same thing, premature ovarian insufficiency and age. Those are the reasons women can't get pregnant. That's what we're taught day in, day out. You can read about it anywhere on the internet. Um, all of us were taught it in school. But what do we actually see clinically and what we aren't taught? But the medical literature has completely caught on to this notion. So is that autoimmune slash inflammatory diseases are at the root of most female fertility challenges. And so a little backstory here, when I was writing my book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, um, you know, like any, I think, uh, good author that that really cares about the with the information they're putting out there you know i was really deep in the research and i was a research scientist before i became an acupuncturist so i i like to read the data i like to look at it uh what i started to see was and this is back in 2013 so this is you know quite a few years ago at this point was a lot of people were saying endometriosis we know it's an inflammatory condition but it has autoimmune characteristics it acts like an autoimmune condition PCOS, same thing. And premature ovarian, it was called premature ovarian aging at the time, then it went to failure or maybe failure was first and now it's insufficiency. But that as well, that in some um, studies, they were actually seeing ovarian antibodies in these women. So the antibodies are a signal or a sign that there is autoimmunity going on. And, and for those of you very briefly you probably all know this autoimmune is just the body attacking itself for, for unknown reasons, right? And it creates antibodies and it will, it will attack and damage an organ or many organs in your body. And so I found it really interesting that PCOS, endometriosis, and POI all actually had inflammatory slash autoimmune characteristics, but yet very few people were talking about it when we saw these patients clinically and you know, I don't know about you, but I wasn't really taught much about 
autoimmunity. I mean, that stuff is all self-taught for me at this point. And I, and I wrote an entire book on it after, yes, you can get pregnant because I became so fascinated with this process. And then also that most women that were dealing with fertility challenges did have Hashimoto's and or celiac disease. And that in the literature as well, habitual miscarriages, or they call it recurrent pregnancy loss, RPL, is known to have um, typically an autoimmune response. And so if we sum it all up, I think we can actually say most women dealing with fertility challenges are actually dealing with an undiagnosed and or mismanaged autoimmune condition or inflammatory condition. Some of the endometriosis people that I work closely with, like Dr. Andrea Vidali, um, of Braverman Research Institute does not like when I call endometriosis an autoimmune condition. He gets uh, gets a little uppity with me and he wants me to call it an inflammatory disorder, which I do. But what I say to him, I say, but it responds really well when I treat it like an autoimmune condition. I don't know that for our our teaching, I mean, our clin clinical experience or coaching experience, it really matters what it is. It's it's just understanding kind of like, where is it coming from? Why does it exist? How do we get to the root of it and fix it, right? Because it's more than just this aberrant tissue, uh, you know, like speaking of endometriosis, like why is it there and why is the body having this kind of systemic inflammatory response that is then also compromising this woman's ability to get to stay pregnant and or to make healthy embryos. So to kind of just sum it up, I mean, I look at all of these as they're basically the same root, right? And when I was researching for the book, I interviewed one doctor up at, at Yale Reproductive Medicine, um, Hugh Taylor, and I said to him, you know, about what I saw in the research. And he said, you know, you're really onto something, young lady, is what he said to me. And uh, he said, uh, we're actually, every single girl that comes to our clinic now for fertility, we're, we're testing to see if they have Hashimoto's or celiac, because we're seeing them all so commonly intertwined. And... Um, and I think it's important for us to look at it from that lens rather than perhaps just the general lens of what we're taught. I mean, I still obviously very much say treat what you see. So because, you know, we know it clinically, we can have 10 different endo patients and they all present different 10 different PCOS patients. They all present different 10 different Hashi's patients. They're all different. And so not to get too caught on these diagnoses, but rather really clearly treat what we see and fix the underlying root of the condition. So this is a pretty slide that my um, team, all these pretty slides my team made for me. I mean, I type in the, <laughs> I type in the text, but um, my team made this beautiful slide and we use it on social media. And it was around um, my recent book, The Egg Quality Diet. But what goes into making up a good quality egg and i also think slash this should just say embryo as well but you know gut health liver detoxification inflammation coexisting health issues immune system uh, and oxidative stress i actually think all fall under the same umbrella of like if we don't go in and fix the gut health slash heal the body's ability to start to absorb nutrition, absorb the micronutrients, then liver detoxification doesn't work. Inflammation gums up the system. Coexisting health issues do not get resolved. The immune system starts acting erratic and will begin to attack anything that is foreign. And an embryo is half foreign. So to think about, okay, there's there's a lot of implications here that we could really just start, if we start peeling back the layers and and healing the gut health, which, you know, that's, a I think, a newer term, Chinese medicine, we've been talking about the spleen, stomach, you know, school of, of thought and um, the theories, the transformation and transportation and making sure that you know, how do we build blood? How do we build chi? It's through the food we eat, right? And so the digestive system has to be working properly. It's got to be able to absorb its nutrition. When it does that, then the cells get what they need. The liver can detox. Inflammation can go out the way it needs to. Um, and, and health issues will resolve. And when we do that, typically a body will get out of the state of just surviving and start to thrive. And that's where the baby will come through, right? And so not to underestimate, so over here, inflammation, um, physical and emotional, there's, and I talk about this in detail in, in a lot of my books, but um, 
I call it emotional inflammation, AKA stress, but really, you know, Chinese medicine all, taught all of us the, the underlying emotions and how they play a significant role. And we, so I do think it's important work to also go and help people unpack their beliefs, give them the tools to, to start to shift their mindset. I mean, that's what I really did with Allison too. I really let her process that anger, process that grief, process the journey she's been on and that she's, she's mad about it and she has every right to be. And, um, and we also know now from a, a neuroscientific perspective that our thoughts dictate our physiology. Like it's clear as day, the thoughts you think actually impact phenotypic expression. Like you will see it. And so you could have the diet in check, the gut could be totally healed, but if the mindset is not working, you know, and we know too, that throws off cortisol. Cortisol will throw off how the, um, the follicle develops and matures and the, the androgens in the body and it will impact egg quality as well. So, you know, these, there's a lot of keys here, but I do think, and I have it on another slide, I do think we can sum it up and like, okay, we want to work on diet and lifestyle. We want to work on gut health. We want to work on emotional health. Um, oxidative stress is kind of the same as, um, you know, it's, it's aging from, oxidation in our body so when we're exposed to toxins but also just emotional stress as well and then of course we can never overlook sperm health epigenetics i think is is probably could be a whole other lecture in and of itself but understanding kind of what their disposition is so you know how to better support them however i would also go back um to the gut health thing if you heal the gut and you get somebody start to absorb their nutrition and their liver starts to work better, you'll be supporting their epigenetics. So I don't know that you need to get too caught up on it. Um, I do like to look at genetics to kind of see what I'm treating, but again, you can get really lost in that and then you stop treating what you see, right? So um, I think these are all just really, and you guys are gonna have this in the PDF, this slide, we're just giving you the whole slideshow. I might not get to all the slides, um, but you'll have, you'll have more than I might get through. So what we aren't taught, is that any fertility challenge is not a standalone or spontaneous event. Fertility challenges are most often a result of longstanding chronic dis-ease state stemming from gut health issues slash malabsorption, immune system dysregulation and inflammation. But understanding that it all starts with basically this gut health slash malabsorption issue that then the body says, I'm not getting what I need. Uh, I'm going into fight or flight. Um, the system's breaking down. I can't detox because you know my liver isn't getting the nutrition it needs. Things are getting caught in the cells. And we have this inflammatory cascade that depending on, I think the disposition of the patient either feeds the existing disease state or most likely is also the root of the existing disease state. So whether that's PCOS or endo or a premature ovarian insufficiency um, or Hashimoto's or celiac. And I don't think we can necessarily, you know, I think there's a fine line, um, but this is my clinical experience. It doesn't have to be yours. I don't think we can necessarily cure these autoimmune conditions or, but we definitely can heal the gut. We can regulate the immune system and we can get the body to get what it needs to actually go into a state of thriving to then allow for fertility to flourish. But if we, if we look at fertility as its own little box, which is what the Western model does, and we, we forget to look at it from a holistic perspective that it is a luxury. It is, it is when the body says, I have enough to give up. I have an overflow of chi and blood and jing, and I'm going to make this baby and I have a beautiful home for this baby. So that's to look at it like that too. But, you know, in, in Allison's case, it, it was a very inhospitable body. I mean, she was in hives like a couple of times a week. That to me is, it doesn't seem like a very hospitable palace. Um, so most of you guys know this, but I think it's an important reminder, 70%. So if we see immune system issues, right? In that case, we saw hives. Um, we also saw allergies. We, you know, if we see immune system issues, we have to think about the gut. We just have to. 70% of your immune system lies in your gut. And it regularly interacts with your food, your beverages, the chemicals in your food, the chemicals your skin comes in contact with. So if we are treating our patients um, 
And I think in just using acupuncture, um, I don't think we're, I think we could do better. I think we could think about diet. We could think about lifestyle. Um, and from an herbal perspective too, that we just don't put them in the box of, oh, she's 41 and trying to get pregnant. So I'm going to give her, you know, whatever, um, some kidney young formula or a kidney yin formula that we want to see what else is actually going on here and why. And to understand too, also from an emotional perspective that we know the gut brain, um, the, the gut and the brain interact with one another as well. And so in order to heal the gut, which basically means reducing inflammation in the body, it will then regulate the immune system. It will help with the emotional clarity. Um, yeah. And like I said, we must never underestimate the emotional inflammation. So again, so redundant here, but this is how, what I've boiled it down to. Improving fertility is about reducing inflammation, emotional and physical, optimizing absorption of nutrition and the quality of cellular health. It is not about how many eggs a woman has left, nor her age. And you know, I see this time again, time and time again in the clinic, a woman will come to me with a super low AMH, a super high FSH, you know, we're talking like 0 0.01 AMH and maybe, you know, super high, maybe, maybe not 20, 30. I've had up to 60 clinically that I've brought in down an FSH. Um, it doesn't quite matter, right? Because those are just, those are just readouts that the body is giving us in, it's a snapshot in that moment in time. And it's a, it's a telling us there's a dysregulation going on and that it's not prioritizing pregnancy because it doesn't feel safe to do so. And so to get caught on those numbers with your patient also does an injustice. It's really what does overall health look like and how can I best support them to be the thriving human that they deserve to be a baby is a cherry on top. That's how I always see it, right? So I want this patient of mine feeling, you know, good in her body again and, and vital and healthy and having awesome menstrual cycles and awesome ovulations and a good, healthy sex life if she's whatever kind of partnership she's in. I don't, I don't care about that. Um, you know, happiness, joy, creativity, right? So to, to not get too caught in their problem with them, but really continue to focus on what is the picture of overall health? What can I do to improve it? Um, yeah, so saying the same thing here again, I wanna get to, um, yeah, if a woman isn't getting pregnant, it's a sign from her body that doesn't have all that it needs to thrive, let alone make another human. So, how do we know this i think is important for you guys to see again it'll be in the pdf for me these are the jump out symptoms that i immediately start thinking that this is an ex her fertility challenges are an extension of deep-seated chronic illness that has not yet been addressed and probably has been around for a long time and maybe was masked by things like the birth control pill or other medications that she's now trying to get off of because now she wants to make a, a baby um, but you see any GI issues, any skin issues, um, including like those hives rashes that we saw in, in the case I presented, you should immediately start thinking about gut health, inflammation and immune system issues. And I mean, this is kind of our patient presentation, isn't it? So getting to the clear understanding of the hows and the whys of these issues and then I do think putting them on um, very specific elimination diet, if you can get them to do that, every every practitioner has different feelings about it, but um, play around with food, play around with supplements, you know, get but get super clear, almost like remove the fertility piece from the picture and come up with your diagnosis, come up with your treatment plan, treat according to what you see and what you're trying, and remembering fertility is an extension of health, right? That's going to just automatically start to improve. Of course, we're going to improve circulation and blood flow to the uterus and the ovaries, but we're going to do that by just amplifying chi and blood um, in the body and, and keeping things flowing and reducing the inflammatory um, exposures. That, that's emotional, that's physical, that's nutritional, right? I also think huge red flags for us is recurrent miscarriage. Um, I think, so I always say more than one miscarriage without a live birth in between. 
I would refer out for some um, reproductive immunology workup and or check out that book, um, Is Your Body Baby Friendly? So you can learn more and about where you should refer them. Um, because, you know, I do think we could do it with acupuncture and herbs and certain supplements and, and medications. And I know, Lauren, that there's been some presentations here on exactly that case and but you you want to be able to identify it and kind of know what you're treating and how to go after it which again comes down to a proper diagnosis um and then also i, I see this trying to conceive for two plus years with no success and or multiple failed um assisted reproductive techniques and then obviously if they have a diagnosed autoimmune or inflammatory condition that you still want to think about like okay what is this doing to the body how can i help regulate the immune system what can i do to help this body get out of basically survival mode and into thriving mode and so just throwing you know vitex and maca at a patient without really understanding the why behind their challenges i think can be um it can delay your process and i think potentially could actually be detrimental too so to really just get clear on what the diagnosis is what do you think is in the way is is she not absorbing her nutrition and so she's extremely you know malnourished and the malnourished body is not really keen for reproduction um is she hot and inflamed is she just you know is she doing all the diet stuff but she hasn't dealt with any of the emotional stuff is she in grief is she in constant fight or flight um has she had a proper workup you know so that's the kind of stuff where we're we can come in and assist, but I do think too, we get to the root of helping with the di the improving gut health. That's where it really does all start. And it's the same thing we've been taught from a TCM perspective is we need to support the body coming back to homeostasis. Um, and how do we do that? So a nutrient dense gut healing diet. I have a picture, I don't know if I'll get to it in these slides today, but I have a picture in this slide show that you guys will get of what I call my fertility plate and what it should look like. You know, I usually generally say uh, six to eight servings of cooked vegetables a day, um, upwards of 80 grams of protein a day from good quality animal sources and uh, some probiotic rich foods, some bone broth, some fruit, and that's it. A lot of our patients, at least I see from an autoimmune perspective, do much better off of grains entirely. Grains are highly processed and they seem to be highly inflammatory for many people, as do lectins. Um, like I said, with the case of Allison, nightshade vegetables were her thing, which is why I really like to do an elimination diet and see, because not every patient is the same. I had one girl, um, 42, she'd been trying to conceive for eight years. She had... Um, 20 failed fertility treatments. Uh, I was her seventh acupuncturist. She had like five functional docs. She was on like her fourth fertility doc, you name it. Um, no one had put her on a clear cut elimination diet. When she came to me, she still had some loose bowels, headaches, joint pain. She obviously still was not pregnant. She wasn't even getting, if she was doing fertility treatments, nothing would even grow out to become a blastocyst. She couldn't get the transfer. She's never gotten pregnant on her own. She knew she had endometriosis. She never did the surgery. Um, I put her on this diet, this lifestyle. I actually had her do a lot of spiritual work too, some of the spirit baby connecting work, which I thought really calmed her emotional inflammation. Um, and, you know, about a year on the diet. And we took, so she was eating these, you know, um, soaked and sprouted, like making them perfectly the right way, green lentils every day. She loved these green lentils and, and she loved tahini, two really healthy foods, right? And I just said, you know, I just want to see because your symptoms still aren't budging. I just want to see. I had her on herbs. I had her on supplements. I had her on all the things. And she still had this, this joint pain and this GI stuff and this kind of thick coating on her tongue. So I said, pull, I want you to pull the beans and I want you to pull the tahini. And uh, her headaches went away. Her joint pain went away. Um, and obviously we were doing a lot of work for the last year with acupuncture, herbs, uh, supplements, mental, emotional work. Um, she was just kind of getting back to living her life rather than putting her life on hold. And she got pregnant naturally after a canceled retrieval because the follicle wasn't growing strong enough. And she had a healthy baby boy that she carried to term. She gave birth at the age of 43. Uh, and we always joke that it was the lentils. 
and then when I, you know, when I did all my research for my books and you do see there's a very common thing with lectins being highly inflammatory, even if they're properly made. So the diet to me, you know, and I think from a Chinese medicine perspective, uh, my, my acupuncture works more effectively when the diet is clean, when the, when things are flowing in the body, um, don't forget to address the coexisting conditions, minimize the toxins in our bath and beauty products, manage lifestyle again, super general. Um, but I think you guys all know what I mean and then restore peace, which I do think is a huge part. We cannot underestimate how much of an influence, um, the emotional inflammation has. And we also know that now from a scientific perspective, of course, we've been saying that in Chinese medicine for thousands of years, we've been saying, right, live in accordance with the Tao and in this, these things should work. You should live a long life. You should be able to get pregnant even in your forties and have healthy children. Right? So it's really coming back home to these, these foundational pieces and, and not getting caught in um, the Western diagnoses or trying to like keep up with their fertility treatments. And it does take, I think, a stern practitioner to push some of these things on our patients. But I always say to my patients now, I'm like, you paid me for a service, right? You're here to get my exp expertise. Well, this is my expertise. This is what I'm telling you, you need to do. And um, getting them to commit to it does seem to work. So again, redundancy. If we don't start reducing the inflammation, no nutrition, herbs, or supplements can be absorbed. You improve TNT function, aka heal the gut. You improve micronutrient absorption and the body that begins thriving rather than barely surviving. That will make a baby. Um, so, Lauren, I can stop here if you want to do questions or I can get into this little brief Let, thing do, I have on age. Let's do some questions because um, I know they're going to get all the handouts anyhow. Um, if they go to the page in the next a couple of days, we're going to leave the hand up, handouts up for a couple of days. So if we can do a little questions, yeah, that would be good. good. Um, thank you, Amy. Um, this welcome. was good. And we may come back to um, your your um, your slides if you need it to answer a question. Let me just um, do a little bit of reminding um, for you guys. So we're going to do some Q&A, keep posting. We've collected a couple. I just want to remind you, if you go to the resource page, this is where you find out what's happening on healthy seminars, including our community unity immunity lectures like today. And um, to find the handouts, um, if you scroll down on the resources page, so again, we're on the resource link, scroll down on healthyseminars.com. Um, we have something that's being offered with Amy, Mark, and myself. If you go to this page and you click on this link, more information, it will take you to a page where we're talking about a program that we're offering. And on this page where you can sign up for more information, we'll have the handouts here. They're not there right now is the time of the recording, but they'll be there later today. So Amy's handouts, handouts will be there. This was a lecture I did, a, a practice management lecture that is, um, that's there. So this is where you can find out um, about the RISE um, Transform Impact. It's basically adding an online practice hybrid. And we actually have a special add on to this where it's all fertility related. So we're gonna go into really detail on treating fertility in your clinic and online. Um, so I just want to let you know, that's how you get to that. You go from the healthy seminars resource page, scroll down, and then you can find the handouts there. Um, Amy mentioned a little bit about epigenetics. I do want to let you know, um, I put in the chat room, but fertility now YouTube channel, we have many lectures from our IFS presenters that were made for the public. A lot of them are talking about the epigenetic impact of diet, lifestyle, acupuncture, herbs, et cetera. And these are available for you to look at and share on your social media and on your website. They're experts educating the public on what they can do to optimize their fertility. Mm. All right, let's bring up some of our questions here. So let me just bring up this document as well. Um, Amy, so one of the questions was around testing. You talked about, you know, the REI will do some of their autoimmune uh, testing for these recurrent pregnancy loss and just women having trouble getting pregnant. Um, what kind of testing are you doing outside of the conventional that you're seeing with your patients? You mentioned like check for Hashimoto. So can you kind of give us a oh, big yeah, overview sure. of some of your favorite testing that you Yeah, like I mean, do? I think, I think every patient that comes to us, most women are not checked for Hashimoto's. They may or may not know they have a thyroid condition and they may or may not be medicated. So all of our patients, you want a current thyroid panel, a complete thyroid panel that has TSH, free T3, free T4, thyroid antibodies, 
And we should also always be looking at vitamin D. If, if any of that is out of whack, it should be addressed. Um, I can't prescribe, I don't know about you guys. So I have to work in conjunction with someone who can do that. Uh, thyroid antibodies, people can still get pregnant with thyroid antibodies present. I think we're, it's not the goal to make them go away. At least that's not my goal. It's just, again, to see like the symptomology shift, right? And then we should see that the Hashimoto's has come kind of into a happier pattern, but I've seen girls still with like antibodies of, of a thousand and upwards carry healthy pregnancies to term. Yeah. Um, I think other tests too, that like I'll look at from a functional perspective, uh, CRP, homocysteine. Um, I like the omega uh, three to six ratio. I think that's very telling. There's some interesting research that shows if if a woman has her omega threes, uh, her omega sixes are lower and her omega threes are higher. I think it's about like a lower than a 10 to one ratio of, of six to three that the pregnancy outcomes in, improve by 40 percent. Um, which is highly significant. So the omega six has come from all the refined vegetable oils and you know things of that nature. Um, poor quality meats too, right? If you're not doing grass fed that type of stuff, you're going to have higher omega sixes in those meats. And so, um, getting them to get more omega threes, reducing the sixes, seems to really help improve pregnancy outcome. Um, and then I think some of the other doctors will do things like you know they'll just do deeper uh, autoimmune analysis. They're looking at like how close uh, HLA, the markers are between husband and wife. They're looking at interleukin, TNF alpha, all that kind of stuff. That, like, it kind of just gibberish to me, but um, to me, it just makes sense of like, okay, there's an inflammatory process going on. The immune system is triggered. To me, I still come back home to like, okay, what's the root? I'm going to treat the gut, you know, and then AKA the spleen stomach, and I'm going to help restore proper absorption. And that, you know, does tend to help the problem. We like in our practice, um, we often will do a GI map, like looking at the yeah. gut microbiome. Do you like looking at that? Yeah, as well? I'll look at that stuff. Too. I'm sure at that. Like my functional medicine training is fairly new. I look at the Dutch. I right. do the 23andMe. I get, I run their epigen their genetic panel um, through Pure Genomics. I like that one. It's nice and free and easy. Three by four looks great though too, um, but it's a, a more expensive service. Uh, I will do a GI map. I do a micronutrient panel as well. And, you know, just kind of look where, where are we missing things? But again, to just go in and supplement, like that's what a, a lot of the functional docs do this too, where then they just become an over supplementer instead of an over prescriber. And still, it's still the root. Why are they not absorbing? Do you know what I mean? So we still have to come back home, I think, to the baseline of what is the nutrition and then what's in the way of the absorption. Could it be stress and emotional stuff? Could it be, you know, physical? I mean, but yeah, the microbiome is, is tremendously important. We're seeing endometritis. It's like, a, you know, so many women are coming back with these infections in their uterus when they're tested. And that is a, a, gut, a gut issue. That's the microbiome being off, right? So we, we have to, we don't have to, but it, it's very helpful to address it. But I also don't know, I think the testing helps and it helps the patient commit to the protocol, right? But I don't know that we always need it. Like we're detectives. We've already kind of come up with our plan and we kind of know how to go about it. I think it helps to show, look, I've made your omega three to six ratio improve. Uh, your, your gut microbiome has shifted. Your micronutrients are better, but um, I it don't acts know that as, it can inspire the patient yeah. to actually make the change yeah. um, because they see it. They only, if you, you know, they, if they read it in a, in a yeah. report, then they'll believe it. You mentioned something about stress. So yeah. um, because as a contributor to inflammation, so, um, they wanted to know kind of what treatments do you suggest for emotional inflammation from the TCM point of view? How are you addressing yeah. inflammation? You know, I like to do, I have like a beliefs worksheet and I have them go through and identify what their beliefs are. And then I will rework those beliefs of like, um, you know, how can we get, I talk about this a lot in my book, Body Belief, um, but how can we get it from this being like, I'm broken, I'm unfixable, it's hopeless to... There have been other women in my shoes. They have figured it out. You know, that kind of thing, like starting to get them to unpack it. But I do think TCM perspective, like the bottom line is the first thing we got to get them to do is witness it and acknowledge it, right? Because then we're going to give it space to move. If we do not give it space to move, we can't move it. So 
and the only way we can do that is to is to actually say this is my belief or like with the case of Allison I had her write letters to like her doctors in the past her her husband she was pissed at him because he wanted to wait longer I never had to send them to anybody I had to burn them you know um we just we just like I gave her whatever you know and that's what I'll tend to do is I give them a lot of different tools like here's meditation read this book go see this, you know, YouTube video or whatever. Um, I'm a huge fan of EMDR and psychotherapy, I think for the right people. I think it's tremendous. That's not TCM, but big fan of unpacking it that way. The spiritual piece, like I recommend Spirit Babies, like it's going out of business. You know what I mean? I love that book. And I think it really helps open them up to this other side, this other channel that Maybe there is a higher purpose here and, and can they connect? And so, but yeah, TCM, I mean, we have to, we have to unpack and, and gently guide them. Some women, you know, it's, it's a extremely traumatic experience what they're going through and to, you know, I know we're all compassionate practitioners, but to meet it with that and then give them the space to really like, so what do you think is your dominant emotion? What is the story you keep telling yourself? What's, you know, they say we have 50,000 thoughts a day, 90% of them are the same. So help them identify that 90%. What is the story you tell yourself every time you get your period? What is this, the belief that comes up? Um, Perfect. All right. We're almost at time here. So I want to, I'm going to invite Mark Scar to come on in a sec as well, if he's available. Mark had a good question though. Can I address it? I saw it pop up about the vegan thing. I just think like two seconds on it. Um, so the question on the vegan thing was, um, you know, you, your diet was like, there's some good animal fat, grass fed fat, some good um, animal protein, I should say, and fat. The question is what happens if somebody's a vegan or they're on a typical um, Indian diet? How do you address that? So two to two part, emotionally one, I say, how is that serving you currently? Um, how do you feel? Uh, is it working for your fertility? Um, two, if there's religious reasons in the way, go talk to your religious advisor, the head of your church or what have you. Um, all of them can be granted medical exemptions to consume some animal products. But I think the biggest thing you have to point out is how is it serving you? Is your health thriving? Do you feel great? Because if you do, then okay, I think we can work around. I usually say, you can give me some eggs and maybe take liver and pill form. And I mean, it'd be awesome if you made your rice and some bone broth. I think we could get there. You know, um, a lot of people I can get to eat fish, not meat. And I just say, this isn't forever. This is for the baby making phase of your life. It's actually for a medical condition. You have a chronic illness that you're trying to treat. Let's look at it like that. This is medicine for that. Um, so I do, I try to break it down. And, and most of my girls come right around. You know what I mean? There can be some pushback. Uh, we see too, I'll say, okay, you can keep beans in. Let's see how you do. If this symptom doesn't shift or this symptom doesn't shift, then we're going to have to reassess. So I'm, I'm a real, you know, I, I, we call them red flags in my clinic. I go back to those red flags every single week. How are things moving? How are things shifting? What are you seeing? And then I tweak and I tweak and I tweak. Um, and I think you, you empower the patient too with that. All right. Um, handouts, they're yeah. available. So this is what I want to show you guys. Okay. So Amy's handouts are here now. There are a few more slides that we didn't go through, like she shows the plate and more on the diet if you're interested, how to get to it. So remember, um, if you go to the Healthy Seminars website and you go to resources and you scroll down, way down here under the freebies that are coming up, um, we have the Rise Transform Impact. And if you click on that link, it's going to take you to the landing page. You're welcome to sign up here. I'm going to ask Amy and Mark in a minute to tell, talk a little bit about what to expect on this uh, mentorship that we are releasing soon. We are going to offer a couple of fun, more free lectures um, for you guys on the practice management side, offering um, the online aspect of your practice and uh, sign up if you want to be notified of those. But on that page is where the handouts are. So just below where you sign up is where the handouts are. I do want to remind you that our community library, this lecture and all the lectures we've done that are free for the live, there's a subscription to the library and we're now at 207 and it keeps growing and growing and growing. So those are available to you guys. Um, it's a subscription to the library. And um, that's what I wanted to share about that. So Mark and Amy, um, you guys have done this before and now you've drawn me into it. I'm actually going to share, I do a whole mind body. I'm trained as a clinical hypnotherapist in this practice. I plan to share 
how I help uh, my patients transform their limiting beliefs with some really simple tools, um, because and that's that emotional inflammation. Um, We're going to talk together. We're going to do one soon about um, hiring associates. But um, I'm kind of I feel like I'm the third wheel with something you guys have really amazing that I'm going to hope to contribute to. Do you want to share kind of what they expect, what this is about? Because there was a few people saying, so what's this about? Can you tell the group what the Rise Transform Impact is all about and what they can expect, please? And the fertility aspect of it as well. Mark, you want to go? You want me to? Yeah, sure. I can I can chime in um, and then you can uh, follow up. Um, you know, really, the, the Rise Transform is, impact is uh, the way we have seen it evolve and um, and impact those who have taken part of it in part of part in it uh, in the past is really um, to take your practice, to take your business well beyond where it is today. You know, where do you want to see your your business and your clinic be in a year, in five years, in 10 years? Do you want to rise beyond where you currently are? Do you want to transform it beyond the limitations of where you're at? And what sort of impact do you want to have in the world with the um, with the people that you uh, interact with clinically? Um, How do you want to impact your life and your business? So this is all about evolving where you are today and growing to well beyond where you could even imagine because Amy and I have evolved and Lauren as well have evolved our businesses, our lives, and the way we impact the world and the people we help well beyond where we ever thought it could be. And we know that it's possible for all of you. And so we want to help support you to take you there. So this is really a mentorship to help guide you through your business desires and goals um, to help you reimagine what those are. And then if you also want to kind of jump in on the clinical side of things and have more support clinically then to help support you and guide you clinically to impact your patients beyond where you ever thought you could. My understanding is that there's a big how to do this online because you both have a very large online um, presence where you have your physical clinics, but your reach is now um, unlimited because you now are coaching and helping women and men around the world with um, online work. And then people can get supplements through your online supplement store and testing, etc. So you guys have done this well about how to do the social media the instagram and this is your expertise you're going to share this correct oh yeah i mean i think that was what highlighted it for us we had always you know mark and i went to grad school together at pcom san diego and we've been friends a long time and every time i'm in california you know we have lunch or tea or dinner and we talk pretty regularly and we always would say we should do some kind of business program and um when covid hit and you know, we would check in on each other. And of course, it was stressful to have to close our practices like all of us on our in person clinics. Um, you know, we, we lost that income, all of us did, right. And, and it was a very stressful time. And we also both saw though, how fortunate we were that we had grown these online businesses, we had these other income streams, and we were still getting to do our our passion and our our medicine we were still getting to practice and influence people all over the world and that um you guys are seeing me in my relaxed pose but that was like such an impetus i know i was like we were screen sharing i was just chilling um but that was like such an impetus for us that it was like you know i mean i saw my associates they they were suffering it was so stressful to pay their bills and and then to also not do our passion right like mark we love what we do we love helping our patients transform their lives and it's it's um it's deeply passionate you know what we do and then growing our online business and all that mark inspired me to create my first online course and so you know he's always been a a mentor to me on that front and we've you know then grown our online businesses and grown our email list and we had these other income streams that were still 
providing for our families during the pandemic. Um, and also though giving us, you know, agency to, to still do what we do. And we wanted to share that with people. And that was really like, it came out of that, you know, when we ran kind of like two versions of RTI uh, during COVID and, um, and it was great. And we learned a lot. And then we, we teamed up with Lauren because he's got so much to offer too, from business building perspective. And, and it's something like, I don't know about you guys, but we didn't get much business building stuff in, you know, an acupuncture school. And so, um, we're self-taught and, and we failed many times and then we learned what, what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and I think we've and, come and up, we will, and we will teach yeah. you what didn't work. So you don't do That's it. it. So you don't do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you don't do it. But yeah. in the end, um, what it, why, what inspired me to kind of be a part of this, cause there's, you guys are busy, busy people. If you say uh, yes to something, you're saying no to something else is, um, I see the future. My prediction for the future is hybrid models. Like I think um, to have that abundance and to reach people, because I think we all like to create value for people, to be a service to people. That's why we're doing this. And to reach people, I think the hybrid model is important. It will give you some immunity against other pandemics and climate change things where physically people can't get to you. And so um, I just think... Um, as we evolve like you know blockbuster videos some of you that are my age will know what that means in north america but they don't exist anymore um and um if you know netflix is coming but if you ignored it you're you don't exist and so um it's if you don't like online at all resist it i don't know how you'll be in 10 years from now i do think a lot of like in my practice a lot of our initial consults are now are done over Zoom, our patients want that, it's convenient, they don't have to travel for half an hour, an hour to get to us. And it's allowed us to reach more people before and get educated. And we can do diet, lifestyle, talk about supplements, herbs, if we wanted to even send those before we start doing our acupuncture and our practice laser or our mind-body stuff. A lot of my mind-body stuff is done online for, uh, for my patients where I'm doing the mind-body stuff with them. And so the idea behind this is um, to take the stress out of it because you don't know how to do it. It's quite overwhelming. Anything is simple once you know how. And yeah. so Mark has been doing online practice for a while. Amy's doing it as well. They've developed a beautiful online presence. They're supporting women, helping women create families because their area is fertility. You don't need to like fertility or do fertility to be part of this group. There's a two tier, meaning there's a the business online aspect, we're going to teach you how to reach more people and how to build your email and, and do social media. So we're going to teach you that. We're going to teach you to change your own limiting programs because mm -hmm. we all have those subconscious programs sabotaging you. And then because we've already been asked, will you do coaching around fertility, which wasn't our initial plan, we will have a, a, an other area where you can join another aspect of the mentorship where we're doing clinical stuff around fertility. So there's the main area where it's general as in it doesn't matter what you're treating this works for online and then you got three people here myself mark and amy who have a focus in fertility i've been doing this since 2000 um so we're going to give you our experience and uh, and people said they wanted that kind of mentorship so that's kind of the plan it's going to launch we believe um, sometime <laughs> in 2022 um and in the meantime on that page i mentioned rise transform impact where you can if you sign up uh, to uh, to be emailed, we'll let you know because we have already two talks planned. We just haven't scheduled them. Amy's put together a really cool talk um, um, that Amy. We still have to schedule that, um, oh, yeah. and that and then we just spontaneously because I just gave a talk on prosper acupuncturist. People really wanted to know about the number one question was hiring associates, hiring yeah. staff, hiring associates. It was like unbelievable. So um, me, Amy, Mark all have associates, and we've all hired staff. Um, and so we're going to share how we do it and the pitfalls and, and give you some structure around that. And that's going to be, a, uh, it'll be really in detail in our, in our, in our mentorship, um, cause we'll have ongoing conversations, but we're going to do a free talk on that as well in the coming weeks or months. So if you sign up, we'll email you to let you know when that's happening. And again, if you go to the rise transform impact, you can see the handouts that I just did. I did it for Australia my last night, um, their morning. You can see um, my handouts for that talk that are there, and you can see um, um, Amy's handouts for this talk. And the t I have a couple of versions of that talk that I've done in the community library as well. So if you join the community library, 
um, um, you can search under my name and you can see a few talks that I've done. I have one on the mind body stuff in there as well, a short one. So hopefully that um, answers some of your questions. Um, one question for you, Amy, they want to know which uh, spirit baby book are you recommending? Yeah, I just I just replied to uh, her personally, but it's the one by Walter. I think it's McKitchen is his last name. It's Walter M. Um, it's just called Spirit Babies. It's on, but also Nancy May studied under Walter, and she has a beautiful book too that I really like as well. M A E Nancy May, and, and she does a, Spirit Baby readings. She's still alive. She's awesome. Um, the, there was also a question. I'm just going to give you guys a resource about. Um, supplements um, that you're prescribing outside the scope of today again that will go into the mentorship i will let you know leslie aldershaw just did a course on testing um, um and and uh supplements so she gave a we're using our clinics brilliant a little um page where she showed um all the supplements she uses and why and then every condition which supplement she uses which she gives to her patients so they can start to say i want this one i want this one i want this one because she's showing them what they do and why um, and then all the testing she does for recurrent pregnancy loss. So Leslie Aldershaw on Healthy Seminars has a two-day, it's like a 12 CU course. But if you're looking for supplements, some of my popular ones that I like that I, I've gained a lot from is Leslie Aldershaw's course and then Leah Heckman's course. Um, she has a couple on there, one on the microbiome. She has one on endometriosis and one on premature um, um, oh, failure and egg quality. Her talk also list out in functional medicine detail of all the supplements she likes and why. So if you're looking for functional medicine stuff now on demand on healthy, check out Leah Heckman's courses because her stuff is incredible. You'll need to read, watch it a couple of times, although her handouts give you everything you need. And Leslie Aldershaw, those two will answer that supplement question. You do those two courses, they give you a summary list. It's yeah, I also good. think it's just like, you know, simple you know keep it simple i think and then there are some specific ones that really do help with the immune system like n acetylcysteine yeah. or um omega-3s you know so lots of good stuff and heal the yeah. gut and then the diet and then amy has three books out there and her latest ones on diet so if you're looking on healing the gut check out amy rob's book um or just do research on autoimmune paleo is basically the elimination diet but i i kind of tweaked it for chinese medicine like that everything's cooked and colorful and there's lots of bone broth that that's really the tweak i made so put your chinese medicine lens on and you can look at um the paleo approach by sarah ballantyne was like the book that kind of changed my game when it came to mm -hmm. diet um, but it's a, an encyclopedia. It's it's obnoxious how long it is. So and for the last the, the people the few that have hung out to the end, I'll just share. I did a I made it available for free. So on the AccuBalance website, um, we don't have it um, modified for autoimmune. But if you go to the for, click to download, um, you'll see that you can get a free copy of the book. So it's a fertility diet book that uh, we wrote a few years back. And we just updated it. and then Kaylee who's a doctor of naturopathy, we have a series of videos. We went and got together with um, this cool catering company um, just before they shut us down for COVID. And we filmed a day of us cooking in their kitchen um, and they're cooking all our fertility, some of the fertility recipes we liked. And then Amazing. me and Kaylee just geeked out about coffee, no coffee, alcohol, no alcohol, fats, all that. And we just, and got her functional medicine stuff. So that's um, a lot of those videos are on the AccuBalance Facebook page and Instagram. There's lots of AccuBalances. So it's the Vancouver AccuBalance BC. Um, and if you go to our website, enzin.ca, that fertility diet's for free. And we encourage practitioners, you can download it and give it to your patients. Um, and it's simple that way. And then if you wanna go into real detail, again, Amy Robb's uh, latest book on the fertility diet is, is an excellent resource. So guys, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Check out the community library. We have 200 plus lectures there now that you can enjoy that are like this. And we keep adding, we have another one this Wednesday. So if you're interested in fertility, we have a medical doctor saying, yeah, antioxidants help with IVF outcomes, you know, cause a lot of them say oh, it doesn't work. We had one do one a couple months ago on how much it helps male sperm quality um, on antioxidant therapy. So rather than saying, I think I feel, they don't do that. They're like, here's the evidence. Why are people saying there's not evidence? Well, it's right here. Uh, so, but we see this now with vaccinations versus not vaccinations. So we realize even when we have data, some people say that data says not good and some data says it is good. So if you're a proponent of diet and antioxidant diet and antioxidant supplements, and you like to give some evidence for it, this talk's gonna share 
why um, you would be wanting to prescribe diet and antioxidants to your patients when it comes to egg quality. So check Amazing. that out. Um, Amy, thank you very much for putting this presentation together. Sandro, thank you very much for holding everything together so we could be doing this uh, today. Appreciate it. Yes. And I'm glad to see that David Rio made it. Now we know it was a real webinar. When he comes in from Portugal, we know this is an official <laughs> Healthy Seminars webinar. Mark, I'll see you and Amy online as we continue to plan yeah. this mentorship program. It's fun. Right. Thank we'll you, guys. That. Thanks so we much. Got, we got two more lectures to get out um, between the three of us that we'll do um, for the group. More on the um, building your practice. I think a lot of people want to know about um, um, online stuff and uh, building the um, hiring associates and staff. I've heard people want that. So that's coming soon because you asked for it. All right, guys. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.